Edge feathering should be part of your overall forest management plan. It can be done through two methods, by cutting trees along the edge of a forest, fence line, or other wooded area, or by planting shrubs along the edge. A combination of these methods can even be used. It can benefit a wide variety of wildlife, including quail and rabbits. Many songbirds dependent on shrubby cover are declining due to the lack of shrubs along forest edges, fence lines, and draws. This video will address the cutting method of edge feathering. If you compare aerial photos from the 1960s and 1970s to the same property today, you'll see that sparse woodland edges, fence lines, and draws now have a full canopy of trees with little room for shrubs and the annual plants that are attractive to quail and rabbits. Notice the arrows in the 1973 photo compared with the arrows pointing to the same locations in the 2003 photo. Maturing trees during the last 30 years have eliminated much of the shrubby habitat on this farm. Edge feathering at these locations will benefit the animals that depend on these shrubby, weedy habitats. If you visit these locations, you'll see how the trees have shaded out shrubs and annual plants. The majority of trees along this woodland edge are less than 30 years old. You can also see how invasive grasses such as smooth brome or fescue have covered the ground, crowding out the Lespedeza and other annual plants beneficial to quail. The same thing has happened in our fence lines. Trees overtop the shrubs, and invasive grasses crowd out the wildlife-friendly plants. The first step in any edge feathering operation is to eliminate the fescue or brome in the area where your trees will be dropped. As you can see, this could release important food and cover plants beneficial to a wide variety of animals. Compare this to a site that still has a rank stand of grass. Spray the grass with a labeled herbicide in the fall after leaves have fallen from existing shrubs for best results. Spring applications of herbicides are not as effective as fall applications. Contact your local agri-service for recommendations for herbicides to fit your needs. Edge feathering can be accomplished with a tree clipper such as this or a chainsaw. It should not be done with a bulldozer. Late fall and winter is the best time to accomplish this task. You can avoid insects and heat. And trees are more manageable without the weight of the leaves and sap. We recommend you edge feather 30 feet from the edge back into the woodland. If you want to have a variety of stages of edge feathering, which is also of benefit to wildlife, try edge feathering a 50 to 100 foot length, skip 200 to 300 feet, and then repeat. The next year, repeat this process on the untreated portion of the woodland edge. If you're renovating a fence line or wooded draw, you should work in at least 30 feet from the edge or drop the entire fence line or draw, whichever is less. If you have enough mature trees, you can accomplish the same edge feathering goals by harvesting the trees for lumber, firewood, or posts. Valuable oaks and walnuts not yet ready for harvest can be left for future generations to harvest. Timber stand improvement to less than 80 trees per acre will also benefit wildlife that depends on shrubby cover and annual plants. During edge feathering, the trees can be allowed to lay where they fall, or they can be placed along the edge in a shingle-like fashion to provide high-quality escape cover for quail and rabbits. Stacking the cut trees into dense brush piles isn't recommended if you're interested in quail or rabbits. If you've harvested posts, lumber, or firewood from the area being edge feathered, utilize the tops in the same fashion and avoid dense brush piles if you're interested in quail. However, some songbirds, snakes, and fur-bearing predators will prefer denser brush piles. The results will be better cover close to the ground and a chance for shrubs and annual weeds to take off. These weeds didn't have a chance before the edge feathering. Rabbits are taking advantage of the resurgence of shrubby growth. Oak stumps, left untreated, will re-sprout. 
When edge feathering, you should treat the stumps or undesirable trees such as honey locust with an approved herbicide. If you suspect that no shrubs are present along the area you're edge feathering, you may want to leave some stumps untreated. Edge rows being renovated should not be stump treated. Herbicide application rates and methods vary from herbicide to herbicide. Check with your agri-service dealer for recommended herbicides and follow label directions. Even if all you have is a chainsaw to perform edge feathering, you can still drop many trees in the direction you want them to fall. This is called a directional felling technique and can be used on many trees that have a generally upright growth habit. It cannot be used with success to drop any trees that are leaning heavily in the opposite direction that you want them to fall. To start, cut a 90 to 120 degree wedge on the side of the tree that's on the side you want it to fall. The wedge should be at least a couple of inches deep. Next, cut from the opposite side of the tree directly into the deepest part of the wedge. If your saw blade becomes pinched in the tree, you can remove it by using a wedge to force the tree apart from the stump. For this, you'll need a plastic or metal wedge and a sledgehammer. Always wear protective eyewear, head and ear protection, steel-toed boots, and protective chaps when using a chainsaw. Be sure to include edge feathering in your forest management plan. If done properly, you can increase the quail, rabbit, and songbird populations in the area. Several landowners have reported quail moving into edge-feathered areas within weeks of the cutting operation. Most landowners can expect a quail response within two years of the operation.